then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, Ah, minhum. It is he who has sent to the illiterate people. A prophet from them, from <coughs> among them. They know him very well. The Prophet ﷺ was not a man who was coming from Persia or Rome or Abyssinia to the Arabs. He was an Arab. With, they knew very well who was he. They never experienced him to lie, God forbid, or to even say something wrong. But he came to teach them what? Look what? First, he recites the Quran for them. We have forgotten this, brothers, the importance of reciting the Quran for one another. He purifies them and he teaches them the book and the wisdom. He teaches them the Quran. The source of knowledge is this book, brothers. The moment the Muslims migrated this book and turned to dictionaries and Britannica and lexicons, they have lost everything. What made the companions companions? They had Britannica, Encyclopedia Britannica. They had any other book? They had iPods, <laughs> laptops. What well, did they have the Quran? And that's why they were the greatest. They didn't waste time in any other thing. That doesn't mean we don't turn into other books, no. But Everything should be based on this book, the Quran. Honestly, brothers, do it, try it. All your financial problems start coming to an end. All your marital problems, all your health, even health. Wallah, you might be sick. You read the Fatiha with the intention of uh, cure, you be cured and healed. <coughs> your children are giving you a hard time, go read Surah Yasin and say, oh Allah, please guide them. They be obedient, subhanAllah, somehow. Because the Quran is shifa mima fi sudur. Wanunaziru min al Quran in mima huwa shifa. You have a problem? Go read. Read any surah with the intention of healing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will heal you. He will take away, He will suck from you the distress, the stress, the problems, the agony. Your wife is not listening to you. She's giving you trouble. She's contemplating divorce. Your brother is giving you this. Somebody is taking something from you. It will be returned back to you. Because of the barakah of the Quran. Okay. Now, we continue with the concept of... You, you, you following, brothers, what I'm saying when it comes to knowledge? Ayah 30, إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُ Ayah 31, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Ayah 32, سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ Indeed, not only you have knowledge, but you have wisdom. So, the work of any prophet is to teach his people. Is to teach his people. There is nothing wrong with teaching brothers. Actually, the first people in society that deserve our respect are the teachers. Honestly, are the teachers. And teachers should be highly, highly respected. And should be recognized. More than anybody in society. Can you have doctors without teachers? Can you? What's the way to be a doctor? What's the way to be a scholar, a alim of religion? You have to be taught. You have to sit down with the teacher. What's the way to be an engineer? You have to sit down and learn engineering. So, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared great reward for them. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best among you are those who learn and teach. The best among the Muslims are those who learn the deen and teach it, pass it on. Because they are doing what? The jobs of prophets. May Allah make us all like that, inshallah. And you don't have to be shaykh with a turban. You don't have to have the title. You can be whatever Allah made you, and you pass that knowledge, inshallah. At least to your kids. At least to your children. Wife and kids. <coughs> Alright. And then he said, قَالَ يَا آدَمُ أَنْبِئُهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ He said, oh Adam, Tell them their names. Tell the angels their names. What? I don't even your name. I just, I just got created. I'm still coming out from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala process. I'm going to tell you who you are. You are Jibreel. You are Israfil. You are Mikael. You are the angel of death. 
you are Harut, you are Marut, you are Munkir, you are Nakir. What? That fast? Yes. Why? Through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is Allah who teaches. Later on, in the story of Adam alayhi salam and his children, who is going to teach Qabil how to bury his brother Habil after killing him? Ghurab. Mm -hmm. Crow. A crow is going to teach him. A crow is going to teach him. So you see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can teach us even through animals. The point that I'm making, brothers, knowledge is everything. Not only Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Even in the stories of the Quran, the first story is the story about knowledge. Because the story of Adam is the story of knowledge. And that's why, brothers, unless and until Muslims start really giving importance to knowledge. Islamic schools have to be priority. Have to be priority. Teachers have to be well paid. Administrators well respected. Because that's the way, inshallah, to civilization again. That's the way back to civilization. Is by paying attention to knowledge. By respect and by spending, also by spending, the money should go. Bulk of our spending should go, should go to education. But we don't. Look at the Muslim world. The bulk of the budget of one country is Ministry of Defense. Not Ministry of Education. <coughs> so that they stay in the, huh? MashaAllah, <laughs> on the chairs until they go to their graves. فلما أنبأهم بأسمائهم when he told them their names قال ألم أقول لكم إني أعلم when Allah سبحانه وتعالى told Adam tell them their names and Adam عليه السلام told the angels that your names are these and these and these and the names of other stuff and the other creation of Allah Allah turned into the angels and said didn't I tell you that I no again أعلم when you go home, inshallah, highlight the word ilm. Whatever there is word ilm connected to not highlight it. And you see the beauty of that, that, that story of creation of Adam. Ilm, 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 knowledge, knowledge, alam, 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 alim, alim. It's amazing. And this is why, brothers, look, you might not have gone to school yourself, but please, make sure your children go to school. The Prophet ﷺ never gone to school, right? He was illiterate, and we should be proud of his illiteracy. We should say, no, our prophet had two PhDs. No, no. He has never gone to school. And that's the greatness of him, is that he was an ummi, a nabi al ummi, alladhi yajidunahu maktuban indahu. The illiterate prophet that they find him, they find everything about him written in their book, Allah says. Everything about him is written in the Torah. And he said, the Nabi al Ummi. Why is it so important to emphasize on the illiteracy of Prophet Muhammad? Why? Who can tell me why? Why we have to keep saying no, he was illiterate? Because it's the, the proof of the divine source of the Excellent. That's the proof that the Quran is from Allah. Had he gone to school, anybody can say, wait a minute, I have doubt that this Quran was written by him. Because he is he's educated. He went to to school. No, he was not, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He never gone to school. He never even knew how to write his name, let alone anything like that. So, inni a'lamu ghayb as-samawati wal ard. Why Allah says ghayb as-samawati wal ard? Why he said ghayb as-samawati wal ard? What is ghayb? Unseen. Of heavens and earth. Indeed, I know the unseen of the heavens and the earth. And then he said, وَأَعْلَمُ مَا تُبْدُونَ وَمَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُبُونَ And I know not only what you can reveal, but also what you have been hiding. Anything we hide, Allah knows about you. Okay, what's the importance of this ayah? إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ غَيْبَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ For you as a believer. What's so important to tell a child? 